Hello everyone, welcome to Neon Dev Days. My name is Anastasia Lubinikova and in this presentation I would like to introduce a new mechanism that enables support of custom Postgres extensions within Neon Postgres. This is a new feature that allows us to support different kinds of extensions, iterate faster and improve performance and security of Neon computes. Firstly, I'll talk about Postgres extensions how they work and how to use them. Then I will discuss some challenges of supporting Postgres extensions in the cloud environment. And after this, I will explain how we solve these issues with our new feature. I will tell you how this feature works and what benefits it brings to our development process and to our customers. Let's start from the beginning. What are Postgres extensions? There are add-on modules that enhance the functionality of Postgres. You can think of them as libraries of the programming language or as browser plugins. There is more than a thousand of Postgres extensions, and they are a vital part of Postgres ecosystem, one of the most loved features. Extensions allow to tailor Postgres to different use cases. They provide functions to work with encryption and AI, with time series and geospatial data, they can turn Postgres into a graph database or analytical database. Some companies also develop custom private extensions to bring business logic closer to the data. Apart from several extensions that are distributed with Postgres, they are supported by third parties. This means several things. Firstly, they do not follow Postgres development schedule, which is only one major release per year and extension developers can iterate faster, while Postgres core remains lightweight and very, very stable. This also allows developers to commercialize Postgres because extensions do not have to use Postgres license, which in turn helps to avoid the need for Postgres forks and helps to keep the project together. So what types of extensions are there? First, and probably the most common use of extensions is creating a package of SQL objects. Usually these are data types specific to some business domain, functions, triggers, and so on. And more complex example of database objects are procedural languages, such as PLPython or PLV8, which are also distributed as Postgres extensions. This type of extension model simplifies installation and version management. They also implement dependency management, making sure that everything works together smoothly. Next up, we have the extensions that enhance Postgres functionality using internal APIs. Such extensions are usually written in C and they can be really powerful. In extension, one can implement new storage methods, handle volume replication, implement new background jobs or add configuration parameters. One example of such extension is Neon itself. And there's more. So Postgres extension system doesn't stop at C. You can package extra binaries and shared libraries written in nearly any language that can be compiled into a binary, for example, C++ or Rust. How to install and use extensions? So first of all, if extension uses Postgres internal API, it needs to be built against right major version. Then, to install extension, we need to put files into sharedir and library files into libdir. These paths are platform specific. So on the slide, you can see examples for Ubuntu. Then you need to connect to Postgres and run create extension command in each database. Postgres will search for extension files in the directories I mentioned above and will run extension installation scripts. Additionally, some low-level extensions that require access to Postgres memory or, for example, log management system may require library preloading. For them, one need to adjust config in Postgres conf file and add library name to shared preload library setting. This change requires Postgres restart. Let's now move to challenges of supporting Postgres extensions in the cloud. As you already know, Neon is a serverless Postgres, 
And from technical perspective, it means that NIAN computes run as Kubernetes pods or VMs, and they scale down to zero when there is no load. Another fact that is important for us today is that compute images are open source and built in an open repo. As of today, NEON already supports 88 most useful extensions, and you can find the list in the documentation. Some extensions are not supported because of serverless nature of NEON computes. For example, PG cron scheduler and extensions that require file storage to be persistent across compute restarts. So, the trivial way to support extensions is to simply bake all extension files into the compute image. But there are certain drawbacks that come with this solution. First, large size of the image impacts performance, and especially cold starts of Neon computes. Then, there is a need to update whole compute image every time any extension is updated. This requires new release and Postgres restart, which is not very convenient. Also, with this approach, there is no way to support closed source extensions because compute images are open source. And last but not least are security concerns. So the more extensions we put into the image, the larger becomes potential attack surface, even if not all Postgres users need all extensions. At Neon, we solved all these issues by introducing dynamic extension loading. The architecture of this feature is on the slide. The idea is to build extensions in a separate repository and push resulting files into S3 packet instead of including them in the compute image. Then we can configure a list of supported extensions for each user in Neon control plane. When compute starts, it checks for supported extensions and downloads control files into compute. This operation is fast because control files are usually very small. And after that, compute works as usual. It will download extension library files on demand, only when extension functions are used. That's it. Dynamic extension loading solves most of the problems I listed above. Smaller size of compute images leads to better performance and security. We can now configure extension support per user which means that we can test new extensions without impacting all comp user compute. And also we can support custom closed source extensions that implement some business logic specific to customer applications. With this mechanism, new extensions can be installed without compute restarts, which allows us to reduce maintenance time and try new ideas faster. Currently, this feature is in technical preview. We are testing it and going to make it generally available very soon. Stay tuned and thank you for your attention.